Yo, what's good? It's your boy El Zai, representing hip hop to the fullest. And right now, you're looking at Hard Knock TV. Yeah. I blow a blunt of Blue Widow, listening to instrumentals in the five star suite with paid for incidentals. Hopping out of cars that you're convinced is rentals. On what's happening for a reason, there is no coincidentals. When I think Detroit, I think Dilla. Do you have a. Do you have any Dilla memories or anything like that, that stands out when you like look back? Like, they're like, oh man, I remember that one time we vibed out to that record and we did this together. Are there any kind of stories that, that come to mind? Uh, not one in particular, man. I done been in the studio with Dilla and watch him like create a classic beat in like five minutes. I mean, I done smoke with Dilla. I done, uh, we were supposed to do like a project together. Um, I remember when, uh, I remember when Dre came down to see Dilla, Dr. Dre. Um, Dilla hit me up like it was it was unusual for like Dilla to like just kind of like hit somebody up like three times in a row, you know, and leave voice messages. So I'm checking the voice messages. He telling me uh, Dr. Dre coming down. And he was like, man, I got to tell you something. So I called him up. And he was telling me how Dre wanted to link up with me and him when he came down. And this was like around the time that, uh, that he just dropped the uh, Welcome to Detroit. So I'm like, damn, really? You know what I'm saying? So he like excited and everything. But uh, I guess Dre came down and I don't know really what happened like that. I can't put that out there, but you know, it, it didn't really go down. I don't think as to how Dilla saw it was gonna go down. But uh, that was really crazy though, for like Dilla to just hit me up like that. Like, cause he wasn't known for that. He wasn't known for just like being that excited to just like hit Cass up like that. But uh, yeah, Dilla, that's my dude. Man, I can only imagine with, with Dylan Dre together. Oh, that man, that would have been classic. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Uh, yeah, Elmatic. Check. Don't let me start you from the genesis. Far from where the finish is. No role models, just empty bottles of Guinnesses. Roaches in the ashtray. Toss and getting fast cash. The ski mask wave from those who never passed class. Born inside of poverty. Probably they stack bread and crackheads. Never looked alive to me. Robberies and liquor stores. Tricks and whores. Reality was sick as yours. So I blow trees stronger than sick of whores. Speaking of classic, uh, Omatic, uh, definitely one of the most critically acclaimed uh, mixtapes to come out. Oh, like, thank you. Probably my favorite work of yours. Oh, thank to you. date. I mean, there's still a lot of stuff to come. Oh, We're yeah. We're going to speak on that, too. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm curious, out of all the classic albums that you could have remixed, why why did you pick Omatic? Um, well, I didn't really come up with that idea. Like, House Shoes, DJ House Shoes came up with that idea. We was overseas, and he just kind of put it out there. Like, man, you should do uh, you should do Elmatic. You know, Illmatic, Elzai, and it just made sense to me, so I just went for it. It's been a couple of years uh, since I came out. Has have you ever had any conversations with Nas? Have you been like, "Yo, I heard that shit," or have you guys ever come cross paths? Nah, nah, we haven't. But I mean, like, it was weird though, because I was um, I was in Australia, and uh, I was performing at this venue, and I guess like Nas performed there like maybe like a month or two ago. And this kid comes backstage and was like, yo, man, I didn't even know about you until like a couple months ago. I'm like, really? He was like, yeah. He was like, man, yo, Nas had a show here. He was, And I asked him like who I should be looking out for. And he mentioned your name. I'm like, okay, cool. Well, that's what's up. So I ain't really meet him personally and I haven't got a chance to like just kick it with him personally. But it's cool that he like putting out there that, you know, I'm somebody that uh, that could possibly be next up in the game. No paternity, but as I'm turning three, I learned to be strong. Pops moved along and he never returned to me. Thought I feel anger for an eternity. I bottle my feelings inside where pride is never swallowed. Followed by killers, they ride fried off the of endo. Busting off cartridges through your window. Different from the one from my Nintendo. That line should have been my intro. This when I started rapping. Looking up the younger thugs with their heart and trapping. Let's talk about pay dues a little bit. You're performing uh, in this year's festival. Uh, first question is, what does pay dues mean to you? Uh, it, it means, um, it means hip hop. It means keeping hip hop alive, man. Um, you know, it means, it means keeping, keeping hip hop breathing. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and I'm, I'm very honored to be a part of it. Uh, if there was a dream lineup of who you'd want to see perform and pay dues, mm. who would it be? Dead or alive? Dead or alive, huh? Uh, Outcast. Uh, tribe, um, Biggie, uh, Wu Tang, um, mm, who else? Who else? Who else? 
maybe organized confusion, souls and mischief. Um, Rock him definitely, and uh, uh, that's all I could think of right now. Honestly, the best. Anyone in your dynasty can test and get you like how piranhas eat the flesh. Pretend that I ain't in fact coming off like a thin hat with strong wind at. Soon as I lay the pen flat, it's certain. Five murder, I decide further your fate with nickel plate side burners. Bang, bang to all my foes, leaving froze off the droves. My flows keep niggas on their toes like the rain tangs. Let's talk about uh, the, the new work. Uh huh. Uh, is, is it called the, the Weatherman? Is that is that the the name of the album? Nah, 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 nah. We rumors? we yeah we flipped it because uh you know um evidence had something called Weatherman. Mm -hmm. So um so we kind of flipped the title. Um as far as like the new music, man, I'm just working like just trying to stack up records and just put out like the best material I can. Now, is there is there a date or a concept for an album or anything you can give us as far? I mean, I know the fans are hungry. Uh, <laughs> no, I can't really give you a concept and a, I can't give you a date either, man. But I just want to make sure that, uh, you know, I just want to make sure whatever I put out, man, people are going to enjoy it. So, you know, that's what it is. How do you feel about uh, the, the current state of hip hop? And are there any of the new cats that got your attention? Um... Feeling the current state of hip hop right now, like it's way different from like a couple years ago. Like I feel like the internet is playing a big part as to why hip hop is surviving. You know, I mean, at first it seemed like a double edged sword. You know what I'm saying? But um, as we got wiser to how to use the internet, like we've we've uh, we've been able to make it work out for ourselves. So. Um, you can like blow up in your room now, you know what I'm saying? You can be in your room and blow up and uh and that's what's up. So I mean yeah, I mean, you know, like, you know, cats like Kendrick, um, you know, that whole crew over there, I like that. Um, it's been a couple new cats I've been kinda like listening to too. Um it's one dude from Chicago, I'm trying to remember his name. Uh damn. It's a kid from Chicago, uh, Chase the Rapper, like, I, I kind of like what he's doing right now. And, um, yeah, man, I mean, I think hip-hop is in a great state right now. I think I think people got their ears open now, and I think cats like Kendrick is opening up doors, man. You know what I'm saying? For people to come behind him and, you know, put out music creatively. And I think he's just, like, warming their ears up for people to, you know, for the next generation to come. It feels like there's definitely over the last couple of years a, a resurgence of, of lyricism and telling stories. Where I felt like that was kind of missing from, especially the radio for for a while. Oh it's yeah, everything was swagged out and everything was partied out. And yeah, now there's a couple songs creeping back in that, that tell stories. Yeah, yeah, ain't nothing wrong with the you know, ain't nothing wrong with the party. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? Everybody liked the party. I mean, you know, that's what it is. But. I'm glad to hear that too. Like I'm glad to hear substance and uh, creative concepts and like music that you could feel. Like you know, not just feel because of the 808 bass, but like you feel it because of like the the you know the instruments and it, it does something to your soul. Like like I'm glad to hear that coming back.